Hi everyone, welcome to show new channel. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Uh, today we will going to discuss about geomorphic process. Uh, in this we will going to learn about endogenic and exogenic. So what is geomorphic processes? Uh, geomorphic processes uh, involve both the endogenic and exogenic forces causing physical stress and chemical action on earth materials and bringing about change in the configuration of the surface of the earth are known as geomorphic processes so a geomorphic agent is that mobile medium which removes transport and deposits earth's material uh, it is broadly divided into two parts i have told you that endogenetic and exogenetic so endogenic uh, this uh, is uh, in this the energy emanating from within the earth due to radioactivity ra rotational and tidal friction and pi primordial heat from the origin of the earth constitutes the main force behind the endogenic geomorphic processes and in exogenetic the exogenic processes include geological phenomena and the processes that originate externally to the earth surface and they are genetically related to the atmosphere hydrosphere and biosphere and therefore to the process of uh, weathering erosion transportation deposition denudation and many etc uh, so this lead to the exogenic so it is in endogenic which is due to the internal uh, uh, forces and exogenic is uh, due to the external uh, not within it's from outside outside from the atmosphere hydrosphere and biosphere so we will see each each of them for, so in endogenic i have told you it is from internal uh, forces it uh, 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 it occur due to radioactivity rotational and tidal friction and primordial heat uh, so uh, it is also uh, divided into two parts. First is diastrophism and second is sudden movement. So what is diastrophism? Diastrophism is general term applied to slow bending, folding, warping and fracturing. And these slow movements are actually very, uh, means are uh, take lot of time. So this movement causes considerable deformation over a short span of time. Uh, and this diastro uh, diastrophism is also divided into apodogenic. Uh, or which are also called as continent forming and second is orogenic or which is also called as mountain building so in this continent uh, forging or apirogenic uh, this uh, uh, is also divided into upward and downward so actually apirogenic movement referred to upheavals or depression of land exhibits long wavelength undulation and little folding uh, so uh, this uh, uh, the broad central of a continent are called as cratons are subject to aprogeny and such as uh, uh, such as those contributing to isosexy uh, and faulting in the uh, lithosphere and aprogenic or continent uh, forming movement act along the radius uh, radius of the earth and therefore they are called as radial movement and the movement is caused by set of forces acting along uh, an earth radius and forming movement act along uh, the radius of the earth therefore they are also called as radial movement radial movement and uh, this their direction may be toward or uh, that is subsidence or away that is left uplift from the uh, from the center so this is uh, about uh, apirogenic uh, this uh, in this there is two thing one is uplift uh, the, so now in uplift you can take example of raised uh, beaches, elevated wave cut terraces, sea caves and fossiliferous beds above sea, uh, sea level are evidence of uplift. These raised uh, beaches are about 15 to 30, uh, 30 meter elevation above the sea level occur at several places along the uh, such, such like Korkai in Th Thrina Valley coast, Koringa near mouth of the Godavari. Kaveri Patnam uh, in the Kaveri Delta, where all uh, f um, that all flourishing seaports about uh, one thousand to about two thousand years. So this is about uh, we we can see in this example also how uplift has formed, and in the subsidence uh, these uh, are actually a submerged forest and valleys uh, as well as as a building as uh, are evidence of subsidence, and uh, examples are like uh, Sudar Sundarban and the run of Kutch. These are some example of subsidence and in this uh, picture you can see uh, the area affected by subsidence and up uplift 
this up upward is uplift and uh, this uh, by this you can see this uh, are the uplift and the, even this is our uplift uh, and this downward is in the G gulf of manar this uh, sundarban are example of subsidence so this is how you can uh, know how the uh, uplift and subsidence so this is about continental forming uh, when if we have seen uh, first is aerogenic and when we have seen uplift uh, upward and downward now the second type is orogenic and mountain building in this is also occurred by just two forces uh, one is tension and the second is compression let's see how orogenic or mountain building occurred so orogenic or the mountain forming act tangentially to the uh, earth surface as in plate tectonics uh, so uh, this uh, uh, this i have already told you this having a tension and uh, compression uh, so uh, tension produces fissure and uh, compression produces folds so this in this example you can see uh, this uh, this are uh, five way we can this uh, fault can happen uh, one is undisturbed block uh, in this uh, in the first example you can see uh, this how the uh, tension and compression this line of fault occur and in the, this normal fault you can see uh, it is uh, uh, a tension is occurring uh, to uh, different sides they are going uh, so uh, normally uh, if uh, if uh, the type of force act from a point in a two direction uh, then it is uh, uh, then it is uh, uh, contention and if it going uh, toward a point uh, then it is uh, it is uh, toward the point that then the, then it is called as compression force so uh, so here tension is occurring here compression is occurring so this is a reverse fault and in this uh, uh this is also occurring but this is uh, again in the different side but even here also you can see a tension is occurring and this is on the thrust plane uh, so it is a over thrust fault so these are the uh, different fault uh, happen due to due to the tension and compression uh, in uh, orogenic and mountain uh, building dystrophism so uh, there are uh, there are uh, uh, in this landforms are, are so produced they, the structurally identifiable units are difficult to recognize and in general dystrophic forces which have uplifted lands and have predominated over forces which have lowered them so uh, host uh, and uh, which is uh, uh, block mountain and graben which is a rift valley formation so host is the narrow uh, block elevated between two normal faults and graben is uh, the is the narrow block drop down between two uh, normal fault so uh, this uh, in this you can see that the stages in erosion and uh, this uh, uh, for tilted fault block due to erosional development of a fold scrap so initially this is old age uh, this is uh, how the from young age uh, young stage to the old age the formation take place now uh, after dystrophism we will going to see sudden movement this is also involved two type two type one is earthquake and another is volcanoes so in earthquake uh, that it occurs when the surplus accumulates stress in rocks in the earth interior is relieved through the weak zone over the earth surface in form of kinetic energy of wave motion causing vibration on the earth surface such movement may result in uplift in coastal area and uh, earthquake causes change in contours change in reverse courses and even tsunamis that is uh, seismic waves created in seas by a earthquake as they are called in J japan which may cause uh, shear line changes spectacular glac glacial surges uh, as in alaska landslides soil creeps mass wasting etc so you can uh, know that in an earthquake in child caused a 1 meter uplift in coastal areas and earthquake in new zealand in 1885 caused an uplift of up to 33 meters in some areas where while some areas in japan in 1891 subsidized by 6 meter of after an earthquake so both uplift and subsidized both can happen due to earthquake this is a very devastating picture of uh, 
earthquake now volcanoes so volcanism uh, includes the movement of molten rocks uh, which is magma on toward toward the earth surface and also formation of many intrusive and extrusive volcanic forms a volcano is formed when the molten magma in the earth interior escape through the crust by vents and fissure in the crust accompanied by steam gases like uh, hydrogen sulfide sulfur dioxide hydrogen chloride and carbon dioxide and uh, uh, many uh, pyroclastic materials are also present in volcanoes what is pyroclastic rocks so so this pyroclastic rocks fragments of uh, or ash erupted by a volcanoes especially as a hot dense destructive flow depending on chemical composition and viscosity of the lava a volcano may take various forms uh, so in this example we can see uh, that uh, there is a, a lot of parameters are mentioned like seal batholith so what are exactly they are uh, so seal which is a horizontal intrusion of molten magma and this dike is a vertical intrusion of molten magma this uh, in bottom you can see batholith which is a, a large body of magmatic material that cools in the deeper depth of the crust develop in the form of large domes lacolith these are uh, large dome shaped intrusive bodies with a level base and connected by a pipe like conduit uh, from below so basically this uh, uh, this uh, volcanoes uh, Uh, lavas are of two type one is basic lava and another is acid lava so basic lava is hottest lava and it is highly fluid and dark colored and rich in iron and magnesium but very poor in silicon content and uh, they flow quite uh, quietly over large uh, extensive areas in the in thin sheet resulting in shield uh, volcanoes uh, whereas acid lava is highly viscous with a high melting point light colored low density has a high percentage of silicon and they form a steep cones very violently in nature and uh, this uh, are, there are three types of volcanoes one is active dormant and extinct uh, active you, you know they frequently erupt or they have uh, or uh, erupt in recent time or um, dormant they have been known to erupt and show sign of the possible eruption in the future the third is extinct which is uh, uh, volcanoes that have not erupted at all in histor- historic time but retain the features of volcanoes uh, in this you can see uh, that a young fold mountain mo- that how earthquake zones are present in the world uh, in this uh, map so now after volcanoes uh, we will see exogenic process we have covered all processes of endogenic now we will going to see exogenic process so initially i have given you a rough idea of exogenic processes which include geological phenomena and processes that origin externally to the earth surface so exogenic factors and processes could uh, also have sources outside the earth for instance under the influence of the sun moon etc they are genetically related to the atmosphere hydrosphere and biosphere and therefore the process of weathering erosion transportation deposition denudation etc as i told you this exogenic uh, is also uh, having a lot of uh, uh, factors uh, is also divided into two form one is weathering and erosion it can take place by weathering also and erosion also so we have uh, also uh, heard here a word of denudation so we will see uh, we will first going to see what is denudation so denudation means to strip off or to uncover and denudation mainly depend on rock type and in structure that include fault fault orientation inclination of bed presence of absence of uh, or absence of uh, joint uh, bedding planes hardness or softness of constituent mineral chemical susceptibility of uh, mineral constituents the permeability or impermeability etc and all the exogenic geomorphic processes are covered under a general term denudation uh, the effect of most of the exogenic uh, uh, geomorphic processes are small and slow but uh, will be in long run affect the rock several due to continued fatigue so 
in denudation process you have seen the weathering uh, these all three are processes of denudation process one is weathering mass movement and erosion and transport so uh, in case of weathering the driving force will be gravitational molecular stresses and, or a chemical action and in mass movement the the driving force will be gravitational forces and uh, in erosion and transportation the driving force will be kinetic energy so uh, the in weathering uh, or erosion uh, the first we will going to see weathering uh, weathering is defined as a mechanical disintegration and chemical composition of rock through the action of various element of weather and climate and erosion is the process of eroding or being eroded by wind water or our natural agents uh, so in weathering there are three type one is physical second is chemical third is biological so in if uh, in in uh, if we see the first chemical uh, uh, that uh, uh, the chemical plays a very important role in weathering uh change so the um, the extremely slow and gradual decomposition of rock due to exposure of exposure to air and water uh the first uh, uh, we going to see the solution uh, um, in what uh, kind of change in, uh, happen in solution uh, you know the solubility of the mineral into water or acid resulting in the removal or disintegration of rock matter uh, uh, co2 dissolve in water forming weak carbonic acid which affect the karst topography now the second chemical change we see we observe is carbonation carbonation is a reaction of carbonate and bicarbonate with the minerals and is a common processes helping the breakdown of feldspar and carbonate minerals third uh, the uh, is hydration hydration is the chemical addition of water calcium sulfate take water and turn into gypsum you know that uh, the gypsum is more unstable than calcium sulfate and fourth is oxidation and reduction oxidation you know that it is referred to the combination of mineral with oxygen to form oxide or hydroxide uh, for example red iron turn into brown or yellow due to oxidation and reduction uh, it uh, uh, this in reduction oxidized mineral are placed in a in an environment where oxygen is, is totally absent and uh, for example red color of iron uh, up, upon reduction turn into greenish or bluish gray so this is uh, the uh, all uh, form of chemical example you can learn of weathering now the second uh, form uh, weather can occur is about physical weathering uh, they are dependent on some applied forces such as gravitation forces expansion forces water pressure etc the weathering processes is caused by thermal expansion and pressure release so uh, in this we will first going to see unloading and expansion this lead to removal of super incumbent load result in the expansion of upper layer and disintegration of rock masses uh, exfoliation process take place resulting in exfoliation domes also so in the second is uh, temperature changes and expansion this is uh, uh, this leads to a diurnal changes in temperature especially in desert region where the outer layer expands and contracts more rapidly than the inner layer uh, set up internal stresses and uh, and disintegration and in the third type which is uh, uh, freezing thawing and frost wedging uh, which lead to accumulation of water in the cracks and crevices of rock and freezing lead to build up building up of uh, stress in rock and consequent weathering fourth is soil weathering uh, this uh, you know that salt in rock uh, rocks like uh, calcium sodium magnesium and potassium etc expand in rock due to thermal action hydration crystallization uh, this process also result in granular disintegration which is very dangerous anyway uh, and the now after physical and chemical weathering we will going to see the third type which is biological weathering this biological weathering is a contribution to or removal of mineral and ions from the weathering environment and physical change uh, due to growth or movement of organism for example decaying plant and animal matter burrowing animal and human action etc now after weathering 
the second example of exogenetic is erosion you know that in erosion this is uh, also a very slow process uh, in this uh, in this uh, the mass movement transfer uh, the mass of rock uh, debris down the slope into under the uh, direct influence of gravity mass movements are aided by gravity and no geomorphic agents like running water glaciers winds waves and current participate in the process of mass movement uh, but in erosion you can see uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, ice river water sea wo- wind underground water this all are the processes which are there in uh, erosion so this is the uh, entire type of uh, earth movement which is a uh, geomorphic uh, processes uh, first endogenetic exogenetic this endogenetic divided in dystrophism sudden movement in this end uh, dystrophism we will, we have seen aprogenic orogenic and in sudden movement we have seen earthquake and volcanoes uh, and uh, in the uh, in the exogenetic we have seen weathering and erosion so this is all about geomorphic process thank you for watching thank you